Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Hadoop World in the Javits Center in New York City. I'm here with two gentlemen from Cisco. Can you guys uh, tell me who you are and what you do? Yeah, of course. Uh, my name is Fareed Jandani. I'm a product manager for the Nexus 9000 and uh, ACI business unit. Okay. Hi, this is Bharat Aledi. I work in the data center group. I'm really responsible for our UCS big data solutions and strategy. Okay. So, can you tell me a little bit about where Cisco is going with with data in, in your organization? What are you guys sure. doing? So clearly, I mean, uh, big data is top of mind for most organizations today. Organizations are looking to leverage big data to gain deeper insights, and the amount of use cases is amazing. All the way from things like fraud detection, recommendation engines, to analyzing Parkinson's disease. The so use cases are really tremendous. Uh, in terms of the trends that are happening in this industry, what we are seeing is that increasingly more and more workloads are now running on Hadoop, especially with interactive SQL as well as streaming applications. So Hadoop is becoming this more powerful platform that can run a wide variety of big data workloads. The other thing that we are seeing in this space is that uh, there is more data and analytics happening on the edge, especially with retail points of sale locations as well as uh, with remote branch offices. Yes, so, so I hear the edge quite a bit. So what are we talking about the edge? So uh, essentially because uh, today when we look at it, there's a lot of data being generated on the edge and there's intelligence in that data. So there's an ability to harness that data if you have the right platform that can, that can work both at the edge as well as in the data center. And Cisco is strongly committed to delivering that platform that works both in the data center as well as at the edge and at cloud scale. Well, so as a, as a company, I, I think of Cisco as having a lot of infrastructure in place. Is that helping with your data? I mean, can you make data go faster because you guys have this amazing infrastructure already built out everywhere? Yeah, absolutely. The thing is, when you look at the problem in the, in the big data world today, uh, big data is currently running on a decade-old server technology, and it is all running on off-the-shelf hardware. The challenges uh, that customers are running into today is that very soon, this, as they expand their use cases, expand their data sizes, they run into scalability challenges, they are running into operational complexities. Cisco introduced their UCS platform about five years back. It's a fundamentally uh, new architecture, a modern architecture that's extremely scalable, extremely flexible, and adaptable to meet the wide variety of workloads that you're seeing with big data today. And what we have done is, we have taken that architecture and extended it to the big, uh, big data place today. And what we are enabling with that is that now customers can kick off their Hadoop clusters in a matter of few hours, and they have uh, an architecture that scales to hundreds and thousands of nodes, and, and, as, and especially it comes with management simplicity as well. So I, I would also think, Cisco, since you have so much infrastructure in place, that you could actually be a performance increaser on the, the flow through of data, is that yeah, a absolutely. fair statement? Yeah, no, so, so specifically with regards to how the, the data moves and the performance of the network specifically with regards to your big data workloads, there's, there's two probably key benefits that I'll, I would highlight here. One is our dynamic load balancing, and the second is our dynamic packet prioritization. So when you look at dynamic load balancing, and say you look at a simple, say you have a simple 2-2 a spine leaf design, and you have your compute connected to your uh, leaves. Your, if, you, if you're running a traditional network design with ECMP, your boxes don't know where the congestion lies within their network, aside from on, the, on, on, the, on their own boxes or their own ports. So in the example I gave you, two spines, two leaves, let's say the link between spine two and leaf two is congested, right? The sending box, leaf one, has no idea that that, that link is congested. So in a traditional ECMP network, they'll split half the traffic, 50% of it will go to spine one and 50% will go to spine two. But with dynamic load balancing, our boxes have the intelligence embedded in them to know, to look at the whole cluster and to see if there's congestion elsewhere aside from in their own box. So in this environment, now you have spine, your leaf one will send two thirds of this traffic to the uncongested link and one third to the congested link. And what we're seeing is about a 30% performance benefit from this, right? And if you specifically look at Hadoop, Hadoop 2.0 isn't just, you know, MapReduce jobs anymore. If you got large workloads like batch, then you got smaller workloads like say transactional um, applications. And these, all these applications have different service level agreements, different SLAs. So it would really help if you could prioritize the smaller flows to move first, right. rather than the bigger flows, and then you would have an increase in, in completion time. And so that's our dynamic packet prioritization. Okay, so that happens automatically, or it's intelligent enough to adapt? Yeah, you just simply have to flip the switch and turn it on. 
and uh, using ACI. It's and, actually and, quite nice. Yeah, 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 and that's just on the performance level. That's simply for ACI on the performance level. So as a company and having such a big infrastructure um, in, in place around the world, really, yeah. um, where do you see Cisco going in the data world in the future? So when you basically look at um, how this landscape is emerging, right? you're seeing an increased number of applications, like we earlier mentioned. There are new applications like streaming application and NoSQL applications that are running on Hadoop. And increasingly with Internet of Everything, there are billions of new connections that are now being established between people, processes, and things. Each of these connections is generating a lot of data. And big data is going to be crucial in harnessing data and turn that into competitive advantage for customers. So the internet of everything, that's the Cisco word for the internet of things? And the yes, industrial yes. internet, and machine to machine, <laughs> and all the things yeah. in the wild the, that are now being connected to the internet and to data? And you guys are going to help enable that uh, more quickly and more securely? Because yes. isn't, isn't going to be the issue with the internet of everything? Is the security part of it all if you have, you know, maybe a transaction money finance on some device somewhere? Yeah, no, ab ab absolutely. So if you look at traditional network designs, we have never been able to effectively secure the edges of our network. And what I, what I mean by the edges of our network, it's the connectivity from the outside world, from the internet, into our data centers, right? And so when, we, when Cisco, when NCMA, Cisco looked at application-centric infrastructure, we realized that we needed to kind of redefine the way security was looked at because of all the increased connectivity that exists today. And so if you look at a traditional network design, let's say I'm a box and borrow this box. I can send him anything and he can send me anything back. We're good to go. Right? But if we have to start securing this up, then we start patching in access control lists and firewalls. But all, that's almost like having a phone with a phone book of numbers you cannot call. Right? You can call anyone except for the numbers in your phone. It's a blacklist model. It's a, it's a traditional network security model. But if you look at a whitelist model, what we've done is now, if you, if you me and Bharat are both running in ACI mode, I connect to him and he connects to me. We can't talk to each other unless a policy is put in place that allows us to. Right? And that policy is then locked. So now it's a whitelist model. It's like having a phone book full of numbers you can call. Right? And so that's, that's a, with regard to security and the internet of everything, we need to start securing the edges of our network as well as within our data center. And so I think that was the major security difference that we were able to and, bring and to the And that's something you guys have already in place? Yes, yeah. Your and it's automatic. Application-centric infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. And you see that as important going forward in the future because more things are going to show up everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you need to start defining how the edges of your networks and your data centers are connected to the other edges of other data centers. So that's that's that, that's where you, security is now broader than just within your data center. Excellent, excellent. Well guys, thank you for your time. This has been excellent, thank you. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you.